All right, well, he said he would sign it, but he wasn't happy with it. Remember last week what the president said of that $1.3 trillion spending measure, which keeps the government going through the end of the fiscal year, another six months or so, that he would never do it again, so don't even try to give him something like that again. Uh, the bottom line is, though, according to my next guest, he did sign it, he did uh, support it, and ultimately uh, we are looking at more spending than we are saving. Former Debt Commission co-chair Alan Simpson joining me on the phone right now. Um, now, Senator, you've been blaming both parties for this runaway spending that knows no pause. Uh, we are likely looking at a trillion dollar deficit this year when all is said and done. Your thoughts? Well, I, Neil, you've been a great Paul Revere, but you don't got no horse. Uh, you've been sending out the warning, but it's too slow. Nobody's listening. Uh, it's this. It's a. I'll tell you, the thing that capsuled it for me was this week to watch these young people march on Washington. Let me tell you, in 16 years, 16 years, you're going to see the greatest march on Washington you've ever seen because these young people and. They're going to waddle up to the window on Social Security and get a check for 23% less. And the trustees of the system are saying that. And everybody is, and the Tea Party is doomed because their whole issue was cut spending. And all their buddies just said, well, we can't do that because we want the gravy. And, and we're sorry about not wanting to do revenue. So... You know, we'll just hand it to our poor old grandchildren. What a disgusting thing to watch. You know, what's interesting is that uh, no one seems to even want to make minor adjustments. When when you uh, uh, were put in charge, along with Erskine Bowles, coming up with ideas to at least rein in the growth of the debt. And a lot of these were simple measures. Uh, they, you know, they were repudiated by both parties. You were abandoned by then-President Obama, abandoned by Republicans. Um, and that was just doing something which at the time was very doable, making slight adjustments. I think we're already beyond just the slight adjustment phase. So what do we do? Well, uh, they got to do something with the AARP. Uh, you got to, you know, got to, you got to just repudiate them. You know what you have to do. In fact, one AARP member here, a deceptively frail person, said, "Well, I guess you could raise the retirement age in 50 years." I said, "Pal." The money is in Social Security and health care, and if you don't even touch it, and not one living politician is saying to touch it, you, you're doomed. But uh, it would mean taking it to 68 by the year 2050, and some frail old coot will say, oh, how could you do that to old people? <laughs> Blew the cost price index, the CPI, chain CPI. Change the change the bend points. That's inside baseball. They know what to do. Pick up their AARP magazine, and it's good stuff. I get it. It's all sorts of wonderful ads. And they never mention what to do to to just tw tweak, just take a little tweak of the Social Security, and they never tell you what it is. They're a bunch of bums. You know what's so weird about it, though, is we're we're past the point of return, and I'm wondering if the appetite really isn't there to even make minor adjustments. Uh, is it because we fail? I know you were trying, along with Erskine, to just sort of spell out, look, we're not talking about present day, either Social Security recipients or, or any one of the other so-called entitlements. So we're talking about grandfathering some in, working over the years, explaining to young people, you're not gonna lose your Social Security, uh, but if we don't do something right now to curtail this, you're, you're not getting any. Social Security, but it was never explained, or at least in the in the in the reaction that you got, it, 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 you, they were drowning you out. And there were a lot of logical ideas you were putting forward. I guess what I'm asking now is, we've submitted a, a spending plan that that doesn't even take into account some fiscal uh, austerity. Uh, it, there's none there. Uh, so where are we going with this? Well, you're going to, to a situation where you're going to have a class warfare. Uh, I won't be around, but somebody ought to tap on my box and tell me how it goes <laughs> in 2034. That's 16 years away, as I say. You can't get anywhere when, when the opposition rises and uses the word cut. They're cutting your Social Security, and some old coot wanders up to you and says, I put in it by God from the beginning. Well, I'm 86. I put in it from the beginning five bucks the first year at 15, and then in the Army, 
and practicing law and never put in over 874 bucks a year. And when I left the Senate in 96, the average old coot picking up Social Security was getting every back in four and a half years. Give me a break. So real quickly, do you see any chance at all right now that let's say after the midterms, either or both parties are open to addressing the spending or this will go on. There's nothing that encourages you in a spending measure where they're going to rein it in, um, tax cuts or otherwise. I have been portrayed as the doomsday kid. I was the master of lost causes, but let me tell you, they ain't going to do nothing. And the next guys up for president are going to say, I want to be your president, doesn't matter what party, independent, green, Democrat, Republican. I can only promise you one thing out there, buddy. Not going to touch your Social Security or anything with your health care. <clears throat> Forget it. Yeah, you might be right. Meanwhile, the AARP is calling me right now. They've taken away your card, and they said the early bird special discounts are gone for you. I want to drive to Perkins in my Lexus and get a meal <laughs> at a discount. You're doomed. All right, Senator, thank you very, very much. It's always good just reminding us. I think we all need that. Uh, Republicans or Democrats, the fact that way, uh, way, 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 way. Too, too much money going out compared to the money that's going in. Uh, and all you have to do is just slow that down a little bit. Just slow it down a little bit. You don't have to reverse it. Just slow it. Uh, Bill Clinton started that process. Um, it is possible. Uh, and that was when he was working out with Newt Gingrich in concert. So it is possible. The historic precedent is there. It, it's just a distant memory.